Los Angeles. Hello, MLS fans. Hello, passerbys. Hello, CCL folk. And more importantly than that, hello to the millions. And millions. Of Defenders of the Bank listeners, this is episode 241, our recap of LAFC's quarterfinal defeat of the Vancouver Whitecaps in the CONCACAF Champions League. My name is Christian Philly Philemon, and joining me in France, they call him Le Sharp. In Russia, they call him Sharf. In Dutch, they call him Deschal. But in Australia, in the United Kingdom, in Singapore, in the USA, and now, of course, no doubt, indeed, in Canada, they call him the Bucket Hat. There Whoa. it is. There it is. You told me I had to wear it this entire episode, so my apologies to anybody out there that's watching on YouTube. This is why I don't wear a bucket hat, folks, because it's a beautiful I bucket can see hat. Why? Yeah, it's pretty bad. It is a beautiful bucket hat. Uh, you told me that I had to wear it for the entirety of our next episode, and I am a man of my word. Uh, <laughs> Not according to some people on the internet. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. That was fun. Uh, there, this is a beautiful thirty-two fifty-two bucket hat. It's got some thirty-two fifty-two graphics on the inside. It's pretty sweet. Uh, by the way. Philly was giving me an intro. I'm supposed to say the scarf. It's me. It's the scarf, J.R. Liebert. Hello. But Philly wanted me to wear a bucket hat for the entire episode. That's uh, that's all you get, folks. This is it right here. I apologize. I am not making this beautiful 3252 bucket hat look very good right now, but that's okay. You know what did look good, Philly? Our entire run in the second leg against Vancouver in the CONCACAF Champions League. Uh, it was deja vu all over again. It was three nothing followed by three nothing, and yeah. and that that was that was a lot of fun, my friend. A lot of fun indeed. Uh, in fact, we broke a record. It was the largest win by an MLS team in a quarterfinal or later in the Concacaf Champions League. So pretty pretty good stuff. And we're obviously going to get into it and recap it. And at the time of this recording, we've got the Atlas Philadelphia Union game going on in the background. It's been a heck of a game thus far. As a neutral fan, it's been quite entertaining. So we're going to find out during or towards the end of this podcast who LAFC's next opponent's going to be. We do know that by, based on what the broadcasters told us, that two weeks is going to be when these games are going to be played. So we know for a fact one will be in Los Angeles. The next question is going to be whether it's going to be in Guadalajara or the city of brotherly love. But more on that later. Now, Scarf, we yeah. obviously have two games to talk about, two very lengthy games. But before we do that, you need to highlight anything that you can remember, anything worth mentioning, any like points of interest. You did something insane, my friend. I did. Absolutely, utterly, tragically insane. You must have been very bored or very ambitious because I know you spent the same amount of money as you would have on a flight. You drove from West L.A., right by LAX for that matter, <laughs> when you could have just walked to the airport, you opted out of that and decided to drive from Los Angeles to Vancouver, Canada. Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Tell us about that epic journey. So uh, I've absolutely loved making the drive. I've done it up the five. I've done it up the one. Uh, used to have one of my best friends, Tony, who you met uh, at my 40th birthday oh. party. Uh, he lived in Seattle for the longest time. So I've actually made the drive up several times. Usually I get to break it up a little bit. Uh, and I thought, you know what? It's spring break. I have an entire week off. I had a friend in Tacoma that I wanted to see, a friend in Seattle that I wanted to see. I uh, was hoping to meet up with Tony, who now lives in San Francisco. That didn't quite work out. Um, was hoping to stop in Portland, stop there for just a little bit. That was nice. Uh, and then made it all the way to Vancouver. I had never driven up all the way straight through to Vancouver before. We had done a couple where we stop in Seattle and then go up to Vancouver. 28 hours, including stops and everything, it took to get up from, as you said, right by uh, LAX, which I hear they have planes there. They get there a lot quicker. But uh, you know what? I wanted to give it a shot. Stopped at Anderson's Split Pea Soup on the way up and had me a, a wonderful little bowl of Split Pea Soup. Uh, mm. Did a little detour around San Francisco. Kept on going. Uh, pretty much didn't stop until I hit Portland. 
took a little nap in a rest stop uh, right after I dealt with all the snow driving up. I got to tell you, the drive is pretty boring uh, once you get past San Francisco all the way up until Oregon. And as soon as I hit Oregon, especially through that Grants Pass area on the way up, dude, it snowed so hard for about 90 minutes to two hours. I did not love that drive at all during the snow. Uh, on the way back, it actually rained for the first 11, 11 hours of the drive. That was fun. Uh, and the traffic in Seattle, both going through and coming out of Seattle, just as bad, if not worse, as anything we have here in Los Angeles. But I loved the drive. I was able to see one of my friends in Tacoma and Seattle and, and stop a little bit in Portland. Uh, but it was 28 hours all the way up. But I had my car then with me, which was nice. I was able to tool around Vancouver uh, a little bit and try uh, try out some different places. Uh, Want to give also a big shout out on my way up, uh, Rich and Marcus and Pat. Uh, they We were texting a little bit back and forth, uh, Rich and I. And Rich took care of the ticket for the game because he knew I was coming up. So I want to say a big thank you to Rich. Uh, and a huge happy birthday to Devo. Uh, her birthday was the first game, the, the date of the first game, which was April 5th. Uh, so we went to lunch, Mercedes and Devo and Rich and Pat and I um, and Marcus. We had, a, we had a great time, man. We celebrated Devo's birthday. We were in Vancouver. The weather was actually really nice in Vancouver while we were there. Uh, and then I drove back down, uh, 26 and a half hours down, 28 hours up. Uh, you know what? It's one of those fun stories, man. I absolutely loved it. Had a good time. Was able to pull off the road and check out a couple things that I found interesting. Do I recommend the drive to anybody and everybody? No, no. It's it's not the most fun drive for, I would say, about 20 hours of it. But you know what? I, I had a good time. I'm glad to say that I did it. I'm glad you had a good time as well. And all I could think <laughs> of was I can't believe that he made that drive. While we are hanging out cozy at Barney's Beanery in downtown Burbank with our good friends, the Cuervos, on a couch, all I can think of was like, this is great. You know, they're going to go out into the nightlife and enjoy Vancouver. And then, oh, wait, no, Scarf's got to drive back down to L.A. Oya madre. Oh, geez. Like, unbelievable that that's something that you did. But more power to you, my friend. Um, hopefully, hopefully you don't decide to either drive from L.A. to Philadelphia or drive from L.A. to Guadalajara. Because if you do decide to do that, no. tu es loco en la cabeza, amigo. Yeah, I will not be driving, especially to Guadalajara. I'll be flying in if we get to go to Guadalajara. This, uh, if you guys can see, this is my Vancouver Whitecap scarf that I bought there in the stadium. I only buy the away team scarves if I go to your stadium. That's from you guys. Thank you, Vancouver. Uh, and also, thank you for the wonderful hospitality and the three goals. Uh, more on the beautiful atmosphere in Vancouver in just a little bit. Want to remind everybody that we are indeed sponsored by Flex Power Tools, flexpowertools.com, the official sponsor of Defenders of the Bank and the front of kit sponsor, of course, for your 2022 MLS Cup champion, Los Angeles Football Club. A huge thank you to Flex for allowing us to be part of the Flex family. If you need anything in the way of tools, not only should you hit up Defenders of the Bank, but you should head on over to flexpowertools.com for all of your power tools needs. Flex Power Tools and flexpowertools.com. Make sure you hit them up. Incredible tools. Uh, and I believe it's still going on in 2023. Whatever you buy comes with a lifetime warranty for everything included in the box. So head on over, flexpowertools.com. Uh, Philly and I are both up to $15 each three times. We have each called BMO Stadium, Bank of California Stadium. And the reason why I mentioned that is because the entire proceeds from the entire season where we keep calling BMO Stadium, Bank of California Stadium, goes to help fund the Mauricio Facio Futsal Court fundraising effort in Southeast LA, of which LAFC, the Mo Facio Foundation, and the 3252 are partnering to build that futsal court in Southeast LA in Mo's honor and again. The link to donate, lafc.com backslash mo hyphen Facio. Head on over and donate, donate, donate as much as you can. I look like an absolute schmuck in this bucket hat, Philly. It's either the bucket hat or you're talking to Hello Kitty, so you can't have it both ways. Are, are we going on Monday? Are we going to actually do it? What's that? 
Huh. The, the, the giveaway. <laughs> you know the I, I, defenders, the irony. So Scarf and I are huge <laughs> Mets fans, as most of you know. And for those of you who don't know, now you do know. So the shtick and the thing that's been funny for a couple of years now, Scarf's uttered disgust at the mere sight of this sweet, beautiful little angel who's getting it choked is. out by an external hard drive, by the way. It is not Hello Kitty. And yeah. the Mets are in town on a Monday against the L.A. Dodgers at Chavez Ravine. And guess what? It's Hello Kitty night in Dodger blue. So I was going to just tell Scarf we're going to go to the game and not mention that it's Hello Kitty night just to see what the reaction on his face would be when they hand him a Hello Kitty. But I don't know. I just I figured I'd tell him otherwise. So you might have another Hello Kitty in your horizon. But before we do go on, Scarf, you mentioned yes. Flex. There's another thing I wanted to mention that was brought to our attention uh, yes. by our sponsor. So we needed to d- disseminate that information. On April the 19th, that would be a Wednesday, from 8 a.m., to 10 a.m., so either you're sleeping in, not going to work, playing hooky, one or the other. You're going to meet Ken, Ali, possibly Philly in the scar, probably not scar. He's going to be teaching classes at Ganal Lumber in Torrance, California, 2600 Del Amo Boulevard, Torrance, California, 90503. There's going to be an activation event. You buy any flex kit defenders, you get a free additional flex battery there'll be the backdrop there the flex lafc you'll be able to take photos last time there was an event there was an mls cup and an l and an lafc player not sure if either of those are going to be in attendance yet i will keep you posted but the street team will be there with a prize wheel as will soccer darts and scarfs hit a bullseye in his career no joke bared witness to it and uh ali that's right ali the magnificent ali And Ken the Falconer will be there as well. So put that on your calendar, Defenders. Wednesday, April the 19th from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. LAFC partners with Flex and Ganal Lumber for a pro event in Torrance, California. We hope to see you there. Yeah, Ganal, a massive uh, establishment there on Del Amo Boulevard in Torrance. I grew up right down the street from where this is happening. A lot of you guys, if you know where Ganal Lumber is, it is huge. So make sure you get on over there and get a spot early because uh, it's going to be a trek getting out to that place. Ganal Lumber, awesome. It's one week from today. We are recording this Wednesday, April 12th, 2023. It's about 834. And they are in about, what, the 70th minute or so right now. And it is 2-1 Atlas, but that is 2-1 too little because, unfortunately, with the goal scored by Philadelphia, the aggregate is 2-2. But the away goals tiebreaker right now is owned by Philadelphia. So right now, as it stands, LAFC will be playing Philadelphia in the semifinals of the CONCACAF Champions League, a rematch of MLS Cup on the horizon, but not just yet. So let's get into the normal things that we do, Philly, real quick. This day in LAFC history, we are recording this Wednesday, April 12th, but... Most of you will be listening to this on Thursday, April 13th, and we have two matches we want to highlight. On Thursday, April 13th, 2018, I had to throw this one in there. In our maiden season, LAFC defeating Vancouver at BC Place, the only time we had done that up until one of the matches we are going to cover behind goals from Carlos Vela and the man who scored the first goal against the Sounders, Diego Rossi. And uh, how about Omar Gaber making his MLS debut as a substitute for Marco Ureña in the 81st minute? Uh, Marco Ureña, one of our favorite players uh, to ever don the black and gold. And (laughs) one, yeah, why not? News to Uh, me. (laughs) He was super nice to us. Remember when we went to go see, uh, was it Costa Rica play? At uh, I think it was at Dignity Hill Sports Park. He was super nice when he saw. By us super there. nice, you mean he waved to us when we yelled his name as he was playing? No, he was no when he was coming out. Remember, he stopped and said hi. He remembered. He was nice. Anyways, Marco, we know you're a big fan of the pod. Thank you for listening. No disrespect. What, it was just kind of funny. One year nicest later, nicest guy you've ever met, huh? <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't say that. Uh, one year later, let's win by two nothing again. This time against FC Cincinnati in their first year in Major League Soccer. Goals by Mark Anthony K. And Carlos Vela in the third minute of stoppage time at the end of the match, 2-0 over FC Cincinnati. That 
is this day in LAFC history. Our Angel City Minute is more like an Angel City 10 seconds because their next match is Sunday, April 15th at BMO against Racing Louisville. And unfortunately, <laughs> it sounds some, so stupid. <laughs> some, some bad news for Angel City as Simone Charlie out for the season with a torn Achilles. And that's a big blow for Angel City. And LAFC 2. LAFC 2 fell to Sporting Kansas City 2 on Easter Sunday as they gave up two goals and only scored one. SKC got on the board in the sixth minute and then again in the 70th. It only took LAFC four minutes to respond to the second goal with Julian Gaines finding Laji Male with a great sliding goal off a nice cross by Julian Gaines, who was clearly the man of the match for LAFC 2 in this one. But that would be all for the black and gold who are still looking for their first win of their inaugural year. They take on Dynamo Deuce in Houston on Sunday, April 16th. So uh, still looking for their first win, three matches in. And Philly, we got two matches to cover ourselves. Why don't we get right in to the first match? This one, Philly, you have a special nickname for BC Place. Will you please tell the millions? And millions. Uh, what I you like to call BC Place. I will. I'm just kind of surprised that 16 minutes and 23 seconds into this pod, you never bothered asking me what I was wearing. Well, okay. I figured we would talk about that at the end because we're trying to, you know, maybe get uh, maybe get this pod rolling along a little bit. But Philly, I'm not even going to ask you what you're wearing. I'm just going to say congratulations, my friend, because uh, a certain sports team that you have followed for quite some time clinched uh, a date to get absolutely smashed by the Boston Bruins. You're, you're going to bear witness to the greatest upset in NHL playoffs history. Now, <laughs> I thought it was only appropriate to wear a hockey jersey, a sport that was, and we all can agree, discovered and founded and pretty much the king of sports in Canada. That's hockey. I'm wearing a hockey jersey. Now, while this might look like L.A. Kings colors, I opted for the least worn Islanders jersey I have. Because it was the last game of the season. They needed a win or at least a point to clinch a playoff berth. And none of the other jerseys that I've worn over the past several years have given me any kind of luck. So I decided to wear this one. Yeah, what, what is that one? That's when they moved to the Barclays Center where they adopted the same color that the Brooklyn Nets did. That's nuts. That's I they have such cool jerseys from like their past and everything. That one's not it. No, it, it might not be it, but I'll tell you what. Like it's a lucky jersey as far as I'm concerned right now because every other Islanders jersey that I have, from the blue to the white to the Gordon's Fisherman to the reverse retro, all of them have given me nothing but but ulcers and, and stomach pain. This one I refuse to wear for one reason. It's because there's a snake that dons the back of it. Ah, John Tavares. All right. So, um, but I decided to wear it for the hell of it. And needless to say, the Islanders won. All right, let's start talking about a real man sport, football. I, I would like to say I'm still wearing a bucket hat. Oh, boy. I have to it's wear it for the, the bucket whole hat episode. Or All her. Right. So, so Take Philly, again, who's wisely. again, you still haven't told the millions and millions what you call BC Place. Well, not British Columbia. No. Nah. Because that would be too easy. That is, in fact, where Vancouver is. Somebody corrected you on a live. I think you said Vancouver, Washington. I don't I know. Did? Some, I don't know. Just something weird. I saw one of your lives. People were like Vancouver, BC, not Vancouver, Washington. I don't know. You might have been delirious. You did drive like 2,700 hours. Anyway, BC Place lovingly stands for Bad Carpet Place. Why? Because in their arena, they play on turf. Now, from what I've seen, you know, I'd only seen it on TV. It didn't look that nice. Because it's carpet. Carpet in a big-ass dome never really looks that great. But your videos in and around the stadium, the place looked a lot nicer than I originally anticipated. Now, the, the terrain surface, not very good. But, you know, the, uh, the BC place on the outside, texturally, looked kind of cool. I'll say this. Uh, that means the iPhone cameras are working really well because it was not great. Uh, as nice as the people are in Vancouver, and they were very nice during the match. Canadians, uh, man. Their, uh, their stadium, it felt cavernous. It felt too big for what was going on in there. Uh, the attendance in the first match was somewhere just north of 10,000, and I believe that was paid tickets, not people that showed up. A hilarious moment was the first maybe 10 minutes of the match, Philly. The drummers weren't there because, oh, you know, they were late. Drummers got there late. They and stopped I, at Tim Hortons? Uh, they must have. I did twice. It was great. The Boston <laughs> cream donut, man. I'm all about it. Uh, I'll say this. I, I've never met a more docile group 
of football fans than the Vancouver Whitecaps supporters. Uh, it took us about 10 minutes for us to even realize they were in the building. Their drummer got there late. I was asking uh, one of the gentlemen who works there for, for the Whitecaps, I said, is this a normal thing? And he goes, yeah. I said, oh, so they're kind of like Dodger fans where they arrive in the third and leave in the seventh. They're like, yeah, that's if they arrive at all is what he said to us. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Uh, they have an opt in policy rather than an opt out policy for a lot of these tickets for the extraneous matches like champions league and everything. So uh, uh, it's, it was kind of unfortunate. It really only, I would say eight or 9,000 people actually in the arena, a very, very quiet arena. There were 11 LAFC supporters in the one supporter section there. I know the camera found other people wearing LAFC gear, but there, there were 11, not a, not a ton of away travel away support for this one, but maybe they knew that it would be kind of a snooze fest uh, all the way around. But again, I, I enjoyed myself. I had a, a, a kokanee, I believe is the, is the beer that they serve there. Kokanee, K-O-K-A-N-E-E. -E. Uh, I always like to try the local beer, whether it's a, you know, a 390, is it 390 pale ale? What's the, is that the one? 319. Three, no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's what, it's what Tony. Philly Hunt just did. scored. Oh, shoot. I, I, I'd, I'd hate to say it. I did say, I did call this. I did say that the Philadelphia Union were going to beat Atlas. Nobody believed me. Nobody believed me. I believed in me. Hello <laughs> Kitty believed in me. Needless to say, it looks like it's going to be an MLS Cup rematch unless a miracle happens down in Guadalajara. Yeah, look, I've never been to Guadalajara, so that was why I was rooting for Atlas. But man, MLS you is loving... enough to feel it to assume that you went to Guadalajara. <laughs> yeah, MLS is loving this storyline right now, right? With uh, the rematch of MLS Cup potentially on the horizon. That's why we chose to record this episode when we did tonight. So lots of fun to be had there. But Philly, uh, let's get into the first leg. Vancouver got there by the way by beating Honduran side Real Espana 7-3 on aggregate they absolutely dismantled Real Espana 5-0 at BC Place before falling in Honduras 3-2 but again after a 5-0 lead they were comfortable enough to just kind of see it out they would not however have the same luck versus LAFC Philly a guy who you posted his post game comments after the second match here at BMO Stadium a guy who I've really come to respect as a coach and somebody who I know Steve Chirondolo likes coaching against as well, the Italian from Firenze, Vanni Sartini, uh, really liked his postgame comments that you yeah. posted. You for posting that. Uh, took over, by the way, coaching the Whitecaps after our good old buddy Mark Dos Santos got let go. And then he was hired back over here at LAFC for his second stint on the bench, this time under Steve Chirondolo. Vanni Sartini, one of the class acts, in Major League Soccer, unfortunately, we would not treat him very well uh, in Vancouver or at BMO. No, but, I mean, he's you listen to him during the press conferences. He's quite pleasant, and he was very pleased with his team's performance despite the fact that it was 6-0 on the aggregate. But he feels confident that this was a really good learning experience for his young group of players. And quite honestly, I, I think the Vancouver Whitecaps are a much better team than the scoring line indicates. So we'll see essentially what happens um with them uh going forward but needless to say they get knocked out and we got two games to talk about so we could get into game one scarf why don't you start out by giving everybody out there the vancouver whitecaps starting lineup yeah normally i like to do a whole deep dive on this but i figure we'll get to the deep dive when we actually play them in mls season action uh the disappointment so far this season though has been at goalkeeper and that's yohei takaoka for Vancouver, he was not very good in this one and hasn't really looked very good all season. The man from Syracuse, Ryan Raposo, Tristan Blackman, who we all know and love from LAFC on the back line, along with Renko Veselinovich and Javane Brown. It was a 4-5-1, so five in the midfield, led by Christian Dahomey, Russell Tybert, Andres Kubas, Julian Gressel, Gressel Mania, as he's called, Ryan Gold. And their forward up top, Brian White. Just three guys I want to talk about on the bench. Deber Caicedo, Ali Ahmed, and Simone, or Simon, excuse me, Betcher. That's the lineup, the 18 for Vancouver Philly. Who would we start to start off this leg for LAFC? 
I, I, did, I thought they lined up in a 4-3-2-1, but that's besides the point. All right, whatever. LAFC in a 4-3-3. In between the pipes, John McCarthy. Back line, we got Ryan Hollingshead, Jesus David Maria, Aaron Long, Cheeky Palacios, midfield, Ilya Sanchez, Kellen Acosta, Timothy Tillman, who is fastly becoming one of my favorite players on LAFC, Carlos Vela, Denny Buwanga Bonanza himself, and Mahala Opoku. In the, on, the, on the bench, you got Eldon, you got Daniil, you got Schipe, Chiellini, Chrysostomo, Daniel Chrysostomo. That's how you call his name, defenders. Not Chrysostomo, Chrysostomo. Eric Duenas, Jose Cifuentes, Nathan Ordaz, Sergi Palencia, and Romero. Not to be confused with Tomas Romero. That man is in Toronto with Bob Bradley. That is your starting lineup and your 18. Let's roll into the game. Philly, the uh, first half was really boring. First yes. half was was pretty hard to watch. In the 13th minute, Tristan Blackman woke us all up with a shot that John McCarthy needed to stop. Uh, as they say in, uh, what was that movie with uh, with with Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell, the uh, the Christmas movie that just came out? Oh, God. now I, can't I don't know, but it. that was a terrible movie, FYI. No it, disrespect to our owner. Did not enjoy that film. It whatsoever. was it, it was pretty bad. But after that, what I have to say to Tristan Blackman is good afternoon, sir. Uh, on that one uh 32nd minute 32nd minute in my opinion philly was when we had the first rumblings of any offense by lafc as carlos vela found Denis bawanga but his shot was wide and my note was well at least we did something and i'll be honest i really didn't take that many notes in the first half of play philly do you have anything that you want to talk about in the first half of play that was notable besides those two minute moments no, I mean, there were some good buildups. There's some decent passing, but overall it was it was kind of meh. It wasn't a very exciting first half other than the times that you would mention. That 32nd minute, obviously, John McCarthy having to make a save on Tristan Blackman. Did say that he would have been my player to watch um, because he just seems to play much better against L.A. teams. He scored against the Galaxy. He scored against us. That would have been the man to watch, and that could have been a – Certainly a game changer, if not a tone changer, had Tristan Blackman capitalized on that. But no, nothing really to talk about. I mean, you had one minute of injury time. You, know, you had a final buildup from Raposo in the box, but he had nobody to connect with. And that's how your first 46 minutes of the game ends. Your halftime statistics are as follows. Shots, Vancouver had the edge 42 on target. Believe it or not, Vancouver won uh, to, to LAFC's none. No shots on target whatsoever from LAFC. Not that much offensive buildup, despite the fact fact that they dominated possession 66 to 34 that's your first half second half though things get interesting things get very interesting because scarf stradamus the man the myth the legend that he is making for himself the name he's rekindling for himself struck again and we'll uh, tell you what that we meant by that as he uh as we highlight the as we round out the scoring Oh, baby, I predicted this would be a 3 nothing match, and lo and behold, the second half for LAFC, they got on the board and did so in a hurry. 55th minute of the match. Denis Bawanga pulls something out of pretty much nothing, an absolute banger as he was able to tuck it over Takaoka and under and off the crossbar, down and in, one of those goals, we were standing in like a lounge area at BC Place, just kind of watching the match. And as they scored, I mean, the whole place was just like, oh my God, did we just witness Denis Bawanga with a lightning strike from distance? one nothing LAFC and Denis Bawanga becomes that man again? Are you kidding? I mean, que golazo Buanga. I mean, he's lucky he didn't get a DUI because that shot was from pretty much the Canadian border, my man. In between two defenders, Vela gets credited with the assist, but the announcer <laughs> called him Dennis. Dennis. <laughs> but you know what? That's right. He was a menace, an absolute menace to Takaoka. One heck of a goal, creating himself a beautiful highlight reel early on in the second half in bad carpet place. Yeah, he was unreal. Uh, you know what? He would uh it's like he would 33 actually, yards out or something like that. Yeah, and, and he would be a big part of the buildup and the scoring for the next goal as well. Philly, we're talking just six minutes later, a very high press on what was kind of a lazy back line for Vancouver, and it's Denis Bawanga himself, Dennis the Menace, dispossessing Andres Kubas, and on the dispossession, who's there to pounce on it? 
Of course, it's Mahala Opoku, and he blasts one after taking one touch in the box, slides it over to his left put, foot and puts it past Takaoka. Philly, all of a sudden, Vancouver doesn't know what hit them. Uh, it's 2 nothing LAFC just like that. I mean, that's one of those plays that exemplifies that defense wins games. Denny Buanga, I mean, he he does it all, man. I mean, we've had players that have been solid on the offensive front, but just would refuse to track back and play defense. This guy plays defense. This guy's all over the place. He makes runs. He he get he collects tackles. He dribbles in and around defenders, threads the th needle through defenders on some of his shots from 33 yards out of the box. Denny Buanga makes everything happen. While Mahala is going to get credit for that goal, it would never have happened had it been not for the tremendous defensive efforts of Denny Bowanga. So you said it two to nil. A minute later, Danny Sartini decides to go to the bench, to the reinforcements, bringing in his two new young academy players, Ali Ahmed and Simon Betcher, who we talked about during one more sleep, the kid who scored uh, a record in terms of number of goals within his first 87 minutes of action. They come in for Dahomey and Tybert. You think, all right, at this point, 2-0 down. They're going to need to go to some big guns. Why not throw these young, cocky kids out to LASC? But spoiler alert, these kids didn't really make that much of a difference. Well, I'll say this. Their attack definitely changed shape. They definitely look more optimistic on the offensive end. I think Simon Betcher did exactly what we thought he would do, infuse some energy into the match. I mean, heck, he only had 30 minutes for those young legs to run, and he absolutely did. I really liked it. But, oh, wait, as he's checking into the game, maybe he didn't even get his boots laced up and his shin guards all the way into where they need to be. Denny Bowanga again. And, look, I know Timothy Tillman, Philly, gets an assist on this play because he did touch pass to Denny Bawanga in the box. But you know what? It was a touch pass to Denny as he's surrounded by not one, not two, but three white caps defenders. And just like they chanted in meatballs, it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter because Denny Bawanga, Dennis, Denny, that man himself did everything he needed to do, carving up three defenders, a sweet touch and a move to his left, blasting it one past the keeper, Takaoka, who had to be just as impressed as the nearly 10,000 that found their way to BC Place. Philly, it was, it was a hurricane. It was a storm that lasted about 11 minutes inside BC Place. Unreal for LAFC as we go up 3 nothing. And speaking of Philly, we got a red card down in Guadalajara on Atlas in the 87th minute, two to two with in the 88th itself. Ugh, it, Philly leads on the aggregate. Philly leads on the aggregate. So just giving you the update right there. Yes, Scarf. Um, I mean, at this point, you got to wonder whether or not we had crap defending on Vancouver side or some legendary playmaking because it really was a tight little space that Timothy Tillman squeezed that pass into Denny Buanga. But you're right, he annihilated a couple of defenders, in particular Javane Brown, absolutely annihilated him, put him in his back pocket and said, here, son, hang on here for a while while I absolutely embarrass your goalkeeper. Konnichiwa Takawa, ta Takaoka, I'm sorry. Konnichiwa Takaoka, I mean, Denny Buanga, absolutely crushes him. And I love what the announcer said there. A goal-scoring bonanza. Bonanza Bowanga. That's a fun alliteration for you. And at this point, man, I got to bend the knee. I concede. I've made fun of you with these past couple of seasons saying that your picks for scoring predictions outlandish and ridiculous. But I now bend the knee. Scarstradamus, you are knighted. Yet again. Yes, th thank you, sir. I got this one right. In the 69th minute, we did have some giggity subs as Stipe Buke and Eric Duanius come on for Mahala and Timothy Tillman. And we also had a scarf sub in the 83rd minute as Sergi Palencia comes on for that man, Denny Bawanga. And look, Sergi Palencia came to shoot. He forced two saves in his limited minutes. We actually looked really good between Stipe Buke and Sergi Palencia. I mean, these guys, Philly, you talked about it on the last podcast too, how these guys came in all guns a-blazing. But really, that was all over but the crying 3 nothing LAFC as we take this one in BC place. And again, three goals, uh, three away goals, which are huge. Uh, and really, that it, it pretty much spelled the end of the tie, end of the leg, end of the two-legged tie, and you guys know what I'm trying to say, uh, against Vancouver. But we still had to come back to BMO Stadium and, and take them out six days later.
Yeah, you're right. Just one quick note, 72nd minute. Vancouver really had one of their better plays. Julian Gressel gets it to Simon Betcher, who heads it just above the crossbar. That was really it. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, defensively, LAFC looked pretty good. I think Jesus David Murillo had a really good game. I think Aaron Long did as well. Uh, we look great. When Denny is feeling it, Timothy Tillman played well. Fine performance and certainly a much better second half. I loved what we showed up there. Just a little concerned about, you know, not having more additional scoring threats. Denny, we rely on him heavily. Denny, we're right, relying on you heavily. And uh, we, we just need some more guys to get in there. I know Mahala scored, but I'd love to see some. Of, I'd love to see Shibay Buke contribute a little more offensively. Same with Sergi Palencia. But, you know. Mr. Matt Doyle, Mr. MLS armchair analyst, is Denny still cabraling, my friend? I think not. Real quick, <laughs> yeah, though, final whistle, second half stats, Scarf. Things kind of turned themselves around. There were a lot more shots between the two teams. You had 11 to 10, uh, Vancouver with the 11. On target, LAFC with six. They're converting at 50% in this game. You want to talk about the difference? You get your opportunities, and you capitalize on them when you can. And LAFC, in these past few games, they have certainly been capitalizing on their opportunities. They led in possession as well, 56-44, and they had a passing accuracy of nearly 90%. We know that in bad carpet place, that ball, or in, on carpet in general, the ball might travel a little slower. Some of these players might need a little bit of time to get adjusted to the ball movement and the anticipation as to where it's going to go. But to have nearly... 90% passing accuracy rate over the course of 90 plus minutes. Very, very admirable statistics on that front. Yeah, look, we played real well against a team that really didn't show up as much as we thought they would. Uh, unfortunately, Philly, it wouldn't take long back at BMO. Let's get into the match. Let's talk about any differences that we've got in some starting lineups. I'll start first, Philly, if you don't mind with Vancouver, they decided they'd seen enough from Takaoka and replaced him with keeper Thomas Hassal, the Hassal wall, as we saw him in the COVID cup, as he played very well. God, that was a couple of seasons ago now, Philly. Uh, on the back line, he actually changed formation a little bit, a 4-3-3 at the start of this one. The four in the back would change a little. He would swap out one and move a player over. It would still be Ryan Raposo and Renko Veselinovic, where they started against LAFC in the first match. But in for Tristan Blackman at center back would be Javane Brown. And taking Javane Brown's place on the outside, he would actually be starting one of those two academy kids, Ali Ahmed. And the three in the midfield, Russell Tybert, Sebastian Burhalter. Oh, boy. And then Ryan Gauld in the midfield. And at forwards, you've got Christian Dahomey, Brian White, and Deber Caicedo coming into the starting lineup. So you have new starters in Tomas Hassal, Ali Ahmed, Sebastian Berhalter, and Daber Caicedo all getting the start this time for Vancouver. In the 18, of course, players that we would want to see, Julian Gressel, Tristan Blackman, and Simon Betcher, Philly. How would LAFC <coughs> change their lineup? Uh, as far as LAFC is concerned, well, I'm going to name him. You tell me. In between, eh, in between the mics, blah, 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 blah. John McCarthy, we got Ryan Hollingshead, Jesus David Murillo, Aaron Long, Cheeky Palacios. Going for the kill. Midfield, we got Timothy Tillman, Ilya Sanchez, and Kellen Acosta. And up top, the triple headed murder machine of Carlos Vela, Mahalo Poku, and Denny Buanga. Our bench consists of Daniil Maldonado. I keep wanting to say Henry. Canadians for playing <laughs> Canada team. I get it. Stipe Buke, Giorgio Chiellini, Daniel Crisostomo, Eric Duenas, Jose Cifuentes, Christian Torres, Nathan Ordaz, Sergi Palencia, and Romero. Really quickly before we get into things, want to give you an update. We got four minutes worth of injury time in this game. Atlas is playing with 10 men. And while the score is tied, what does Atlas scarf and Philadelphia have in common? Oh, uh, I don't know. You want to guess or should I just tell you? You can just tell me. I have no idea. So Atlas is in 13th place currently in, in, in Liga Mekis. They have two wins on the season. And the Philadelphia Union, 10th place, also, with two wins, 
on the season. Granted, uh, Atlas has obviously played more games. I mean, double seven to to actually no fourteen to Philadelphia seven. But despite the fact that we're playing the Philadelphia Union, I will tell you I would have preferred playing Atlas in the next round just because I think they were the weaker opponent. I yeah, think look, Philadelphia. That's- I think Philadelphia's got some uh, some vested interest in a chip on their shoulder, as most people from Philadelphia do anyway. Absolutely. Look, that's the reason why we're uh, we're talking and we're doing this episode at the time that we are doing so we could do it during the second half of that match. I, I believe it's gone final. Uh, I'll have to double check. But uh, uh, it- we got that infamous chant apparently back there in Guadalajara. Oh, lovely. The uh, The chant that we're not supposed to do in Major League Soccer or anywhere else anymore. Come on, guys. Uh, but it is uh, still 3-2 on aggregate for Philadelphia, but Atlas would need 2. 2-2, two, two, uh, over. Yep, there we go. There's your ball game. 2-2, uh, two, two, it ends. This leg ends. Of course, Philadelphia winning the first leg, one nothing means it's 3-2 aggregate. So it'll be a rematch of MLS Cup in the semifinals of the CONCACAF Champions League. Uh, let's get into the second match. Uh, Philly, it would take eight minutes. Just eight minutes at BMO Stadium. Carlos Vela burying a penalty kick earned by Denny Bawanga after he was taken down in the box. Look, I still don't love Carlos Vela's like slow run up or anything, but uh, I'm going to say this. We need to make a change at LAFC. Maybe she needs to get an extra coat or a jacket to keep the kids warm and everything else too, but we got to get Carlos Vela's wife and kid down on the field more often right there pitch side because Carlos Vela was playing like a man possessed uh, in this match with his wife and child down there at pitch side. After he buries the PK, he normally shoots the arrow or blows the kiss or whatever it is up towards the, uh, the city view terrace box over there where his family sits, but not this time. This time it was over right near like Rich's little celebrity corner over there on that side um it it was really cool there's a a cool moment later on in the match what we'll talk about but philly it took eight minutes for us to absolutely rip the heart out of vancouver now up four nothing on aggregate philly denny bawanga taken down in the box and it is carlos vela to bury the pk and we're gonna actually show you that clip And defenders, for those listening, you're going to get to hear it. But before that, I just want to bring up a play that could have been a a game changer as well. In the game at BC Place, you had that play by Tristan Blackman in which it woke up John McCarthy. Had he threaded the netting, it could have been a different game. Early on within the fifth minute, J-Mac had to make a big save on a shot by Caicedo that resulted from a very bad uh, clearance from Jesus David Murillo. There was a shot in the box. Moody tried to clear it. Caicedo had a nice look at it, but John McCarthy made the play. And then back to your point, Denny Buanga catching a ball on the counter, doing his run, gets taken down by Raposo. And uh, let's show you the takedown and the PK. Carlos Vela. <laughs> oh, now we got the PK. He puts hey. it in. This is the right video. What the hell is going on? We did it. Cats and dogs sleeping together, mass hysteria. Needless to say, I was quite nervous at the idea of having Carlos Vela there. Carlos Vela has not had a the most successful track record for striking from 11 meters or 12 yards. Uh, but this time around, no if ands, buts, or, or worries. Carlos Vela strikes it, and I think that's a really good thing for him because he's been trying, he's been knocking on doors, he's been getting assists, he's been getting nice passes, but he hasn't been scoring goals. Score on this stage? I mean, fantastic. So good start for LAFC. And Steve even alluded to it in the press conference. That first goal by LAFC seemed to have taken the wind right out of Vancouver sales, especially because the play started off as a penalty in the box. It wasn't a nice shot. It wasn't a buildup. It was just a silly foul on Raposo, your buddy from Syracuse University, by the way. (laughs) I am a Syracuse guy, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, Ryan Raposo not doing the orange any favors, that's for sure. Uh, I really, look... uh, as much as I just want to highlight the goals and get this over with, just like Vancouver did, because it was pretty terrible. Uh, there were a couple of moments there in the first half that I really do want to highlight. John McCarthy making a great diving save and then Cheeky Palacios with a diving block to force a corner, both happening in the 16th minute. 
And then look, I, I'm a Lakers fan. Philly's a Knicks fan. So Philly doesn't quite have the same memories of, I don't know, winning and, and championships and everything as I do, as we're talking about basketball. Willis here. Reed was alive when the Knicks won. Let's just but, put it uh, in perspective. <laughs> but in the 25th minute, after we give up kind of a dangerous set piece in a tough spot, we played it off very well. And then Jesus David Murillo, I absolutely love when he goes on walkabout and just takes that ball all the way from the back line, almost got, kind of going box to box like your classic midfielder, but he's the one taking the ball all the way up through. It reminds me of when Shaq used to try and run point guard for the Lakers every now and then on a breakaway, and you were just kind of hoping, like, dear God, just don't run over or hurt anybody and try to make a good pass while you're doing it. That's kind of how I feel every time I watch Jesus David Murillo as he takes this ball kind of from box to box. I loved it there in the 25th minute, but Philly, can we just talk for a second about Ilya Sanchez and that pass that he made in the 31st minute? I mean, it was flipping brilliant. Let's uh, let's try to give the video another try. Hang on one second. <laughs> All right, let's, let's see. I don't think it's working. Maybe it's working. Oh, oh, here we go. Sliced in for Vela. Vela! That we is are splendid. All right, bro. From the Mexican Here, let's watch the star for LIFC. Well, that was the better replay anyway. Look at that brilliant pass from Elie Sanchez. Connecting with Carlos Vela on the run. Looks he makes on. Thomas the wall her fall. Take an ugly and bitter and ugly nasty fall. Booyah. Two My, nothing. Billy, there we go. We've seen the first two goals. An absolutely brilliant touch pass. I don't know what I liked better, though. The beautiful touch pass by Ilya or that soft, feathery touch for Carlos Vela to settle that ball down before he takes that shot with the left foot. Either way, we are up 2 nothing. Philly has now removed himself from the screen. I have no idea what's happening if you're watching on YouTube here. But either way, we're having a good time. There's Philly. He's back. This has been fun. Uh, Philly, halftime. What are you doing now? It's all time. your fault. Two no, nothing. I'm sorry. It's okay. Everything okay? Philly, you yeah. good? Yeah. I, I'm doing what I can to keep it on the rails here on my side of things. Uh, I, it's it's two nothing at halftime, Philly. Any halftime stats that you want to share? I got to tell you, it was a pretty boring first half, despite the two goals. Because honestly, Vancouver really did roll over and play dead at that point. Well, hold on. There was you remember that play within the 34th minute? There was a beautiful ball in a Boanga by Vela, yes. and they, they had a shot that it looked like it went in. It did. It absolutely looked like it went in because it looked as if it was in the, the netting, but it was from the outside of the netting and it just happened to cross over the post into the goal. It looked like Denny Buanga might have scored, but no goal there. My dad <laughs> was talking to me about it today. He's like, why did they take uh, Denny Buanga's goal away? <laughs> well, my head going, I don't recall him being offside or anything. What do you mean? Then he described the play. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. It looked like it went in, but that was Yeah, e even when he doesn't score, it still looks spectacular every time Danny Bawanga touches the ball. So yep. half halftime, 2 nothing. Stats. Philly, your thoughts? Uh, I mean, LAFC was up 2 to nil at this point. Oddly enough, though, it was Vancouver that had the lion's share shots. Nine of them to be uh, in, uh, truthful to LAFC's five. Shots on goal. Four to LAFC's three. Now we're shooting 66.66%. Pretty darn good. John McCarthy, obviously the busy keeper, having to do so many things. And then we have possession 5347. That's the story for the time being. And going into the second half, we have a couple, ourselves a couple of subs. Yeah, we had a couple of subs, especially uh, Tristan Blackman, who comes in for Vancouver. That was fun uh, because we really wanted to see him play. But Stipe Buke. And Jose C. Fuentes, more from him in just a second. Come on for Mahala and Ilya. Nice to see you those guys get a little bit of rest. Uh, and Philly, I mean, look, I'll be honest. I was really bored in the second half. Vancouver played terribly. LAFC did everything they had to, to, uh, to just keep possession keep controlling the ball. I felt like everything that Vancouver was doing, our back line looked like it was five steps ahead of anything that Vancouver had going on. And really all we were kind of waiting for was some sort of moment of magic, maybe from a player who hadn't done it yet this season. You know, we were hoping, you know, maybe somebody who hasn't scored, who had been scoring for the past couple seasons, especially one who likes to shoot from distance might get on the board at some point this season, maybe using, 
this second leg of the CONCACAF Champions League to get themselves going for the entire rest of maybe the 40 to 45 games that we have left to play Philly. Does anybody come to mind that would be a good candidate for something like that? I recall years ago seeing a highlight reel of a young, a Jose Cifuentes, absolutely drilling a rocket from well outside of the box during his U days on the Ecuadorian national team. We've been waiting for that similar highlight for a number of years now. Jose Cifuentes starting out last season and the season before that very strongly and somewhat fizzling out. He has not had a great start to this season. One would say there might even be a little bit of drama. I don't know if the story is that he had one foot out the door being and thinking he was going to Europe or whatever the case may be. But what he showed us in the 65th minute, a reminder as to why he truly is world class and why he's had European teams sniffing at his door. Cifuentes from a distance, assisted by Denny Buanga. You had Carlos Vela crossed it into the box, connects with Danny. Danny gives it to Sifu, and he absolutely slams it. It happens to rattle off of the left side of the post. He put his defender on skates. There's no doubt about that. I watched the replay a dozen times. I couldn't actually tell who it was. Doesn't matter. He rattles it off the bar, puts LAFC up 3 to nothing at this point, and now we've got 6-0 in the aggregate. Holy Toledo, are you kidding me? We're getting in scoring three goals, three goals, three goals. Uh, I mean, our performance in the Champions League has been fantastic. And we're going to go to the video. Let's see if it works let's, this time. Let's see Producer if it works. Pandas, perhaps it's me. Uh, you do things so properly. Luanga. Sir Fuentes. Sir Fuentes. Oh! world-class from Jose Cifuentes. All right. I've learned something. It's it's me. It's not anybody else. You're you're the problem. It's you. Coming through in the clutch. Uh, Yeah, I mean, great goal. And I got to tell you, when the announcer made his goal call, it sounded more like of the uh, the height of climax as he was hanging out with a lady friend. I was thinking, man, buddy, here's here's a Marlboro for you. You sound like you need a cigarette. You were quite excited after that Jose Cifuentes goal, but I don't blame you because it was absolutely outstanding. What a goal for Sifu, and hopefully that adds that confidence to his game, that that swag, that pizzazz, that, that attitude that we want to see from Jose Cifuentes because I'll tell you, for the longest time, I was thinking we'd see more of Sifu rather than Ilya. Tillman is deserves a spot in the midfield as far as I'm concerned. Ilya deserves a spot in the midfield. And I think it's up for grabs between uh, between Kellen and obviously Sifu. But Sifu, hell of a goal, man. Hell of a goal. Yeah, look, that was pretty much the nail in the coffin. Not that there were already two nails before that or even two or three more nails before that in Vancouver. But that being said, we did get some subs. And thank goodness that Cheeky Palacios finally got some rest coming off with Kellen Acosta in the 66th minute for Sergi Palencia and Eric Duenas. And there would be another Daniel Chrysostomo sighting in the 73rd minute as Denis Bawanga, who comes off to a huge ovation despite not scoring in the match, comes off for Daniel Chrysostomo. And then Philly was just a lot of passing. Uh, uh, there, was a, there was a ball where Carlos could have got a hat trick. I think everybody thought he was offside because he might have actually been offside. Yeah, so that was really, in the first was, half. Yeah, but really there was uh, – there was. I know, I know someone on Twitter was rather unhappy that Carlos Vela played the entire 90 minutes. Well, you know what? When your wife and daughter are pitch side for possibly the first time in, in quite a while, you're going to want to stay out there and play for your family. I know what happens if we would have got hurt. Or what happens if something would have happened with Carlos Vela? I totally agree. But you know what? The way we were in control of everything and the way Carlos Vela kind of dropped back to almost playing like a second six, uh, you know, it was one of those things where I felt like we were trying to conserve him as much as possible. Uh, And and Philly, uh, that's pretty much all she wrote for this CONCACAF Champions League second round. Oh, no. no. Philly has has something? Philly has something. Oh, no. We had a first at BMO Stadium, on the hollow ground oh. <laughs> of the black and gold. I'll and tell you what, Philly, let me, let me let you talk about that while I deal with a slight computer issue here. We're going to – this is this is the fun part about doing live. Uh, Philly is going to take you through uh, – I guess uh, Team Security Paul had to have a little fun. 
Pitch Terrific. Invaders. We had Pitch Invaders on the terrain of BMO Stadium. Towards the end of the game, we had a young man who crawled over and went out and took himself a selfie with Carlos Vela. We'd never seen that before. He darted by one security guard, darted by another one, decided to slow down, and he got tackled. I don't mean like the guy who proposed to his, his fiance at Dodger Stadium quite bashed. He got tackled anyway. So here's the kid who's now going to be spending that night possibly in jail. Who knows? The one person I do feel bad for is Team Security Paul, of course, because his night just got longer. Who knows how much paperwork he has to fill out? Who knows what the story is? He's probably thinking to himself, hey, all right. The night is over. It's been busy. We've had so many games over the course of so many days, and we're going to go down to Sunday to, to Carson to play another one. This is great. I'll get to chill on a Tuesday night. Oh, no, no, no. You have work to do, Team Security Paul. Paperwork, if anything. That kid went out, did that, and look, while I thought it was entertaining, and I'm sure plenty of other people thought it was entertaining, quite honestly, it was a bold yet stupid move. It would have been a hell of a lot cheaper for that young man to have purchased himself, purchased himself a ticket in the field club, asked Carlos Vela nicely for a selfie, and had it gone down that way. I can tell you it would have been a lot cheaper to go to the field club than have to pay for any kind of bail or to have to pay for any kind of legal fees or to have to pay for any kind of fine. While the field club, and all the clubs for that matter, are somewhat pricey, nothing is as expensive as legal fees and attorney fees and civil fees and stuff like that. All things, one of those things, no doubt that this kid is going to have to pay, uh, but it was, certainly was the first for us at BMO Stadium, Bank of California Stadium as well. So the whistle, the final whistle blows. We advance to the semifinals. Man of the match, without a doubt, Carlos Vela doing his thing. Final stats, 14-10, to 10, LAFC on shots. Target, LAFC had six shots on target, and they scored three times. 50% of the time, they capitalized. Great job. Possession, 55-45. to 45. And again, a couple of key things to highlight for you. Largest win by an MLS team in the quarterfinals or later. LAFC advances to the CONCACAF Champions League semifinal for the second time in club history. If you remember, we played Club America, and we beat them as we're going to beat the Philadelphia Union. And they have been an offensive juggernaut in the CCL, outscoring opponents 10 to two this year and 22 of five in all competitions this year. LAFC, you don't think they're scoring many goals. They're doing their thing, but more importantly, they are not allowing many goals, period. They've only allowed three during the regular season, two during the CONCACAF Champions League. Carlos Vela doing his thing. Uh, he, he ranks third in CCL play this season, while Denny Buanga's got the most goals out of any player within the CONCACAF Champions League. And he, and by he, I mean Carlos Vela, the all-time leader in Champions League goals for LAFC with eight, having scored five of them in the 2020 Champions League, in addition to the three he has this season. We're doing our thing, defenders. We're scoring goals. And uh, I, I, just to reiterate, LAFC will be taking on the Philadelphia Union in the first leg of the CONCACAF Champions League in two weeks. Check your bank accounts, defenders. Check your bank accounts because you <laughs> probably got charged. Producer McPandas, did we get charged today? We did. We got charged today. So check your bank accounts. If you're feeling a little lighter in the wallet and you opted in, you know now it's because we have a semifinal match. And fingers crossed, a finals match down the road. So that's the story for our two-legged game against the Vancouver Whitecaps. Still waiting for the scarf. I believe his, his laptop might have died. He was having some kind of cable issues. Um, oh, minor technical difficulties on our end, but you know what? I'm still wearing a bucket hat. Yeah, you still are. And, and, and we're learning, more importantly, a wise man becomes wise because of the numbers of mistakes that he makes. If, uh, if y'all are Game of Thrones fans out there, Scarf's right. We're not we're analog guys living in a digital world. But the reason I bring up Game of Thrones is because what we do best, we're the Tyrion Lannisters of the pod fam. We drink and we know things. That's what we do. We drink and we know things and we talk about the things we know. Uh, all our problems technologically tend to reside in between the chair and the keyboard, me and him, which is why we have producer McPanda. Why do I call her McPanda? Two reasons. She's Irish and number two. 
number one. Number one, she's Irish. Number two, it reminds me of McDonald's, and that puts a smile on my face. But anyway, that's the story there. We drink and we know things. Analog, digital world. Thank you, producer McPanda's scarf. You're still wearing a bucket hat. Yeah, let, let's be honest, too. With Panda producing this, Nina's taking care of all the website stuff that we do. You know, Nina helps us out quite a bit on the back end of those things. It's it's one of those and things. We, and, we, and we got eye candy. And we do. We Yes, we have Hello Kitty. Uh, no, I, I think, honestly, too, it's important for everybody to know how, how supported we are by both Nina and Panda. Uh, with Nina taking care of everything on the website and Panda doing everything she's been doing to help us out producer-wise. Uh, it's, it's been really great. And, and we really do appreciate that Philly. Uh, when, when I went off, we were talking about a pitch invader and Paul, uh, I think we got through the end of the match, right? You went through, uh, you went through the end of the match. We went through the statistics. We talked about go. LFC having scored 10 goals, allowing two 22 and five in all competitions. Carlos Vela, LFC's all time leading scorer in the CONCACAF champions league, uh, eight goals, three of them being this season, five of them being in 2020. We talked about how this was the largest win by an MLS team in the CCL quarterfinals and forward. Yeah. We talked about a lot of things while you were right, gone. Cool. So as long as we talked about all that, uh, I do just want to remind everybody, obviously, this next round is set uh, for at least our side of the bracket. There is a match tomorrow with Tigres taking on Motagua and Tigres coming into that match with a 1-0 lead and I believe a 1-0 away goal lead as well. The semifinals, the dates are to be determined, but at some point between April 25th and May 4th. Two weeks. We we will be hosting uh one match of the of the game, one match of that leg will be here at BMO. And obviously the other match will be in Philadelphia. And and I think based on how everything has gone, Philadelphia is gonna be hosting Philadelphia second, hosts, brother. They host the second leg of the of the match. No, Philly hosts the first leg in two weeks. Are we sure? Positive. Okay. All right. So it'll be Philly hosting in two weeks and then us hosting after that. Uh, I'm, I'm interested that second, that, that other matchup is going to be fun. I mean, obviously uh, we have the, the tie with Leon because we have played them previously in champions league. And obviously that huge match to knock them out three, nothing at, at then bank bank of California stadium. And obviously we've got some ties with Tigress. Uh, so it would be fun to kind of exercise those demons. But before we do that, we obviously have to get past last year's Eastern Conference champion and MLS Cup runners up, much to the chagrin of one Jack Elliott. And you know what? We're going to hear all kinds of things, right? There's no Gareth Bale walking through that door to bail us out. But you know what we do have? No Gareth to bail us out. I like that. Right? We do have number 99, Denis Bawanga, who's the current leader in Champions League scoring this year. We do have the 2019 MVP and looks to be more of a resurgent, Carlos Vela. We do have Mahalo Poku. We do have an, an offensive threat in Timothy Tillman that we did not have last year. We do have a woken up Jose Cifuentes. We have an Ilya Sanchez who's playing as well as he has played all season. We have Kellen Acosta in the midfield to back us up if any of those three guys can't go or if he goes instead of Sifu. We've got the Italian national team captain and heartthrob of LAFC, one Giorgio Chiellini. Uh. We've got a resurgent and, and, and dare I say, playing the best football of his career, Jesus David Murillo. We've got Chiki Palacios and Ryan Hollingshead on the outside who are playing as good as possible. And if they can't go, well, we've got Sergi Palencia, who's been incredible. We've got the 18-year-old kid, Eric Duenas, coming off the bench playing significant minutes for a Stipe Buke, who you have to account for. We've got two keepers that have already proved they can win matches this season. I, I, I'm going to go ahead and say this. No Gareth Bale, no Christian Teo, no Chicho Arango, and we might be better than we were last year at MLS Cup, what we just did to Vancouver and what we've been doing for the most part all season in Major League Soccer, Philly, I think we're better than going into MLS Cup. You said a lot of things that we have uh, that Philly doesn't have. And there's another thing that we, I mean, obviously we have a lot of talent. They have a lot of talent. But there's two things that we have, because I don't have actually three, but I don't have the third. They didn't make one of those. But uh, read them and weep, suckers. <laughs> read them and weep that that's not a gold coin that is uh, the lighting shield. it's a supporter shield that's an mls cup trophy 
That's something Philadelphia doesn't have. And by the looks of things, doesn't look like you're going to get it this season either with two paltry wins, 10th place in the East. You know what? Good on you. I'm glad that we get to have this rematch. I was thinking we take the slightly easier path. While going to Guadalajara is no easy task, I think Atlas going in was the team that was the weaker of the two. Atlas, not performing very good in Liga Amekis this season. Sucks that we don't get to take that trip down to Guadalajara. The Lord knows I don't really want to step foot in the city of brotherly love. But that's okay. For all those Philadelphia Union fans that think that they should have been the MLS Cup champions last season, all right, fine. We'll humor those comments for a little while because we're absolutely going to crush and decimate you in the CONCACAF Champions League final. Why? Because we're the freaking champs of this league, and don't you forget it. Yeah, I don't think they're going to forget uh, John McCarthy's heroics, Ilya Sanchez's penalty – or. Uh... Uh, yeah, penalty shot there to uh, to take it home. Nor are they going to forget Gareth Bale dunking on Jack Elliott. Uh, but Philly, let's not forget it's Wednesday, April 12th. We've got ourselves a match coming up in just a few days, 13 miles down the road in Carson. I know it's not a CONCACAF Champions League match, but dare I say it means just as much, if not more, as anything that we've done in CONCACAF Champions League so far. Philly, we take on Carson in Carson in front of some Carson supporters. We don't know who's going to be there or what they're going to do just yet. We know that Chris Klein's writing emails to everybody. We know that Will Koontz is trying to convince everybody that he can turn it around really quickly. We know they've hired a new social media director guy who who brought about the rebrand of the Washington co- Commanders. Uh, uh, that's already a fail. Right? So uh, I, I got to say this. I'm Why don't you bring forward- the logo designers from the Guardians from Cleveland as well? <laughs> I'm looking forward to this match uh, just as much as I am anything in the Champions League. But Philly, more importantly, uh, we don't have a home match, at least a MLS home match, until uh, late April. Houston Lies. Dynamo. Lies. We, of course we have a home match. We're taking over Dignity Health Sports Park. <laughs> That's our home. As we've claimed this city is ours, we're going to claim their home as ours too. That'll be BMO Stadium uh, south of the one, uh, Southern 110 uh, Stadium. Uh, well, until San Diego gets a team, it'll be BMO South. We'll put it that way. One thing's for sure, there'll probably be more people than the 18,688 that were in attendance at BMO Stadium. That goes without a doubt. And chances are you're going to see a wave, a sea of black and gold. And then after that, you're going to see a sea of blood. And what I mean by that is us parading Cosmo's head across Dignity Health Sports Park. We're taking this city and Carson over. We are finally going to win in Dignity Health Sports Park. And that's the end that I'm going to say about that because we've got an episode of One More Sleep to air on Saturday, and this is also the CONCACAF Champions League. So an hour and 11 minutes of us rambling and trying to figure out any uh, technological issues. Thanks again, Producer McPanis. Scarf, do you have any final words before we go? I can't wait to take off this bucket hat. <laughs> not, not until Panda hits end recording. You have to keep it on. That is the Well, thing. then you know how we like to end all of our episodes, including this one, episode 241, reliving the 6 nothing aggregate defeat of the Vancouver Whitecaps. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.